So they talk about a lot of things. So let's start with forensic auditing. So when you hear forensic, the word forensic means investigative, right? Deep, deep investigation. So forensic accounting involves preparing financial information for use as evidence by a court of law, for use by evidence by a court of law. Examples include provision of financial information relating to loss of earnings, settlement of a legal dispute, um, divorce settlement and all of those kind of things. So you are preparing financial information and you use that as evidence in the court of law. There are two aspects to forensic ac um, accounting. Number one, you have forensic investigations. And number two, you have forensic audits. Forensic investigations, and then you have forensic audits. Forensic investigations and forensic audits. So what's a forensic investigation? What's a forensic investigation? It is an audit that is carried out in response to a suspicion of a wrongdoing. It's like the way a police would you know, do their investigation. And it's done usually to prove or disprove certain assumptions. You know, so if you want to check out for fraud, whether fraud is happening, um, you will likely do a forensic investigation. The objective of a forensic in, forensic investigation, sorry, is to obtain evidence that might be used in legal proceedings. Always remember the context is the court of law. To either resolve a dispute or prove someone innocent or guilty. So that's the whole objective of a, of a forensic investigation. Often forensic investigations are usually reactive, right? So what does this mean? The incidents occurs, then the investigations happen after. So they are reactive. They are not proactive. They are reactive, which means that um, forensic investigations only take place after the occurrence of the incidents in question, meaning that they seek to prove or disprove suspicions of wrongdoing and provide evidence for legal proceedings. Sometimes, and this is a few times, right? Most of the time, they are reactive, but sometimes, a few times, they can be proactive or preventative, proactive or preventative. There are a few times like that. Now let's move on to forensic audits. You know, somebody might be asking me, you said a forensic investigation is like an audit of suspicious wrongdoings. So now we are talking about forensic audits. Forensic audit is simply an element in forensic investigation. But here, there's an audit tax to it, right? It refers to the methods and procedures used to obtain audit evidence in a forensic investigation. So yeah, we are looking at methods and procedures, methods and procedures that are used to obtain evidence, that is audit evidence in a forensic investigation. So when there's a forensic audit, or have forensic auditors come to an organization, they have their own procedures, you know, that they go around to get their audit evidence so that they can facilitate their forensic investigation. So what is forensic auditing? What is forensic auditing? Forensic auditing may be defined as the process of gathering analyzing and reporting on data. So to remember, it's usually what I do is gather, analyze, report. So G-A-R, G for gathering, A for analyzing, and R for reporting. 
So it's the process of gathering, analyzing, and reporting data. In the predefined context, remember the context I said is legal, legal. The context is legal. In a predefined context of a legal dispute or investigation into certain irregularities. So always remember that when you're thinking of forensic, forensic things need to come, two things need to come into your mind. Number one is investigative. Number two is legal proceedings or the court of the law. These things should immediately pop up in your mind. If you have these two keywords, um, certainly you can be able to explain what a forensic investigation or audit is. So one of the things you, need, you might have realized by now is that um, audit is a lot, right? So to chew, To chew and pour is quite difficult. So one of the strategies that I recommend for you guys is that um, if you want to remember a definition, don't chew the entire definition. Remember keywords. You know, that's why always when I'm explaining, I bring up the main words that relate to the definition you're talking about, right? And so when those main words are in place, if you remember, um, a word like investigative, and you remember a word like legal proceedings. You should be able to explain what a forensic investigation is. If you remember a word like, if you know the meaning of audits, and you know that you can remember audit procedures, you know, <laughs> you can explain forensic audits. Very simple. The nature of forensic investigations and audits. Forensic investigations and audits are associated with situations where disputes arise or wrongdoing has occurred such that criminal or civil action is being taken in a court of law. Again, I'm repeating this again, court of law, court of law. That's the context. Context is key, court of law. So what, can, what are the general areas that may give rise to forensic auditing? What are some areas that may give rise to forensic auditing? You know, it's very, very important. What are some of the areas that give rise to forensic auditing? One of the things that should come into your mind is when you hear forensic, F, forensic, fraud, fraud. Fraud starts with an F, forensic starts with an F. When you hear forensic investigation, one of the areas that is applicable is fraud, fraud. Another one is negligence. If you're investiga you investigating issues related to negligence, another one is insurance claims. So in any of these above examples, a forensic accountant might be called on by the court of law to act in the capacity of an expert witness. The key here is expert witness. We've talked about experts, auditors, experts, and all that. So I'm trying to, you know, mention this word and I showed highlight something to you, expert witness, which means that, you know, this is not just a witness, but an, an, a witness who is an expert, right? In the area of forensics, this person is well-versed and can stand in and speak on issues relating to, um, relating to forensic. So they stand in as a, in the capacity of an expert witness, providing evidence to the court on the financial implications of a situation or whether there's even grounds to substantiate a claim of fraud or negligence. Again, if you easily want to remember the areas where forensic applied, just look at the word forensic, F-O-R-E-N-S-I-C. F-O-R-E-N-S-I-C, so fraud starts with F, right? And you see the letter N in forensics, so negligence, right? You also see the letter I, so insurance claims. 
Very, very easy way of remembering. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's move on then. Seems it's explanatory. So, application of ethical principles to forensic investigations. The ethical principles set out earlier apply to accountants. The ethical principles set out earlier apply to accountants carrying out forensic work. So what are some of the ethical principles? These ethical principles, you can even remember the principles that are set out in the ISBA code, right? And it can help you. You do not need to reinvent the wheel. So we talked about the principles of the ISBA code in somewhere in lecture two or something like that, I can't remember. So here you see you have integrity, um, you have objectivity, you have professional competence, you have confidentiality, you have professional behavior. These are ethical principles that every auditor must embody, right? Integrity, we are talking about honesty here. You know, just to refresh your memory, we're talking about honesty, objectivity. We are talking about um, being independent such that you're able to give a very, very, you know, fair opinion. So here we say in relation to the forensic accountant, you know, the forensic accountant is paid by a client to carry out an investigation and the client will presumably be hoping for a particular outcome to the investigation. For example, in a fraud investigation, the criminal investigators who use a forensic accountant may be hoping for evidence of guilt. However, the forensic accountant must remain independent you know, independence and objectivity go hand in hand, right? If a person is not independent, it is most, most likely that they cannot be objective. So the forensic accountant must be independent and should seek to obtain evidence to reach a fair opinion. Then you have professional competence and due care. Professional competence and due care professional competence and due care. This was quite explanatory. You know. The people who are acting as forensic accountants should be sufficiently competent to do the work. You also have confidentiality, you know, where there's privacy and secrecy to you know, the client's work and all that. <laughs> then professional behavior. You should not do anything that will be detrimental to the image of the accounting profession. It's very simple. We've talked about these principles over and over. So this is just a refresher. Procedures in forensic investigations. In the exam, you, be, you may be asked to describe the procedures in a forensic investigation. So in answering such a question, you know, it, it comes in handy to think about the elements in a normal audit investigation. You know, in a normal audit investigation, how what what ought to be some of the um, elements in there? So first off, you need to establish the objectives of the investigation, right? You need to establish the objectives of the investigation. What are you trying to achieve with this investigation? What are you trying to achieve with this investigation?
what are you trying to achieve with this investigation? Very, very important. Um, that's the first thing. Then the second thing is to plan the investigation. Plan the investigation. Now you plan the investigation so that you are able to achieve the objectives you intended. You're able to achieve the objectives you intended. It's very, very important. So the audit work has to be planned in such a way that that will provide sufficient, appropriate evidence to achieve the objectives of the audit. Right? So when you're able to plan the investigation, that's when you'll be able to gather the evidence that you require to carry out your forensic investigation. You know, and when it comes to gathering audit evidence, you can do so in several ways, right? You gather audit evidence through what? The audit procedures, the ones that I mentioned to you that you should never forget going into the exam. Inquiry, confirmations, um, analytical procedures. Then once you've done planning the investigation and gathering your evidence, you now use the evidence to reach an opinion. Then after that, you end it with a report that you prepare for the client. So, these are the procedures in forensic investigations. Now, how do you report on forensic audits? How do you report on forensic audits? How do you report on forensic audits? Key issues in reporting will be whom the report is intended for, so who are you who is this report intended for the type of assurance required and what is the purpose of this report is it to investigate fraud is it to investigate negligence is it to substantiate an insurance claim or is it to provide evidence to uh, what is the purpose what the purpose what purpose the report is required for very, very important. Any questions so far? That's any questions so far? That's where um, we bring our discussion on forensic audits to a close. Okay. It looks like there are no questions. Yes. Sir. So, yes. so if, for instance, you suspect probably uh, a criminal activity, but you have no fact to back it. Can you still go into for a forensic audit? Since probably you, as you said, probably it must be from the court or something. So it must have an evidence that that thing exists before the forensic audit must take place. So forensic audits or forensic investigations are two way, right? They are both like what I was saying. Oftentimes they are reactive, but they can be reactive or proactive. So, proactive in the sense that maybe you are sensing something. When we say proactive, it means that it's preventative. You know, when we say something is preventative, it means that, like, for example, you know, you can either wait to get sick before you go to the doctor, or you can take good care of yourself and you will not go to the doctor at all. So if you take good care of yourself and you don't go to the doctor at all, that's being proactive, that's preventative, right? And if you get sick and go to the doctor, 
that's reactive and that's corrective. So um, what do you call it? Forensic investigations can be both, right? So you can sense something and say, mm, something, something fishy there, something fishy there, something fishy. You know, that's leaning more towards proactive. And so the services of, you know, if you are seeing trends of, a, of that, the services of a forensic accountant will be employed in order to gather evidence, you know, in order to gather evidence to substantiate that claim. Uh -huh. I don't know if I answered your question. And also there are times when, um, you know, it is quite clear that something criminal is going on. So the forensic accountant comes in, comes to gather hardcore evidence, you know, hardcore evidence that they can use, that can be used as a case in the law courts to say this is the evidence, you know. Uh -huh. So it's two way, it's two way. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, please. Yeah, it's two way. Okay, let's move on to internal audits and outsourcing. Internal audits and outsourcing. Internal auditing, um, as we've already indicated, you know, a lot of these audit concepts, they overlap, you know, they overlap. So um, I think that, um, okay, we we'll hope, Five minutes to time, please remind me. We need to have a discussion. I think that today is when? Today is 11. I think that I would want us to have a class. Um, a class sometime in the week. Yes. So just remind me. We need to have that conversation before we go off. So internal auditing is an independent objective assurance designed to add value and improve an organization's operations. It's auditing, but it's done by internal um, staff, right? Um, so it helps an organization accomplish, accomplish its objectives by bringing a systematic disciplined approach to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk management control and governance processes. That is the definition of the Institute of Internal Auditors, IIA, but you do not have to chew this definition. All you need to know is that it is simply auditing, right? It's what you do in an audit, simply audit, but it is done by staff of the company. That's why it's called internal. What is done by Auditors outside the company is called external audits. So it's an independent objective um, assurance and consulting activity designed to add value and improve an organization's operations. Assurance services, so it's two way assurance and consulting, right? You see those two elements. Assurance services involve an objective examination of evidence for the purposes of providing an assessment on risk control and governance processes for the organization. So we've talked about assurance. Um, cannot talk about assurance without talking about examination of evidence. You know, examination of evidence. Here, you are not providing an opinion you know, like the external auditor here, you are just giving an assessment, giving an assessment on risk, giving an assessment of governance and all that. Then you have consulting services. These are advisory and client service activities. Right, these are consulting services. That's why <clears throat> um, usually, when you look at maybe all these big four, you see assurance, advisory, 
and tax services, you know. So here you have assurance services and consulting services. Um, yeah, so basically that's uh, what we have for internal audit. Now we'll talk about internal audit and outsourcing. So what are the reasons for developing this internal audit? Why, if external auditors will come and come and audit the firm, why do we need internal audits? It's a very, very good question. The main reasons for the importance of the internal audit function are as follows. Internal audit helps management to monitor the controls within their entity. So one of the things that internal auditors do is control monitoring, internal control monitoring. Internal control monitoring. It's very, very important. Internal control monitoring. You know. Sorry. So I said here that similarly, as markets become increasingly competitive, it is important that entities become very competitive themselves. This means using resources efficiently and effectively. An internal audit function can be used to monitor the efficiency of operations. Right? Um, so apart from monitoring internal control, what is the benefit of this internal auditing. They also examine financial and operating information, right? They examine financial and operating information. An internal audit department might be given the responsibility for a detailed examination of financial and operating information. Right? And they do this by investigation how Investigating, sorry, investigating how financial information is identified, measured, classified, and reported. So if we look at how these things are done, then they can recommend any improvements that can be made. You know, so they examine financial information, right? So for example, if you take your company, the internal audit team, can look at the, your financial information, look at how you, you know, measure that, informa measure that information. For example, if it's an estimate or if it's whatever it is, they can take a look at it, look at how it is identified, look at, you know, the source of that information, see how it is classified and eventually see how it is reported. Does it make sense? Is it proper um, and all that? And they recommend improvements. Then you have um, they also review compliance, compliance. So we've talked about internal control, right? Which relates to operations. We've talked about financial information. Then now let's talk about compliance. There's also situations where senior management may ask internal audits to check the operational department, whether the operational departments are complying properly with laws, regulations. And these are usually called compliance audits. Compliance audits. So internal audits, you know, are very, very huge when it comes to doing things like that. They also review the three E's, economy, efficiency, and effectiveness of operations. You know, um, they do value for money audits, value for money audits. I didn't want to go into that too much because we've talked about that over and over again. So they review the economy, efficiency, and effectiveness of operations. Any questions on that? Okay, so what are the factors to consider in evaluating the internal audit function? 
what are the factors to consider in evaluating the internal audit function? Number one, the quality of reports produced. You know, we look at the quality of reports to see, oh, um, this audit function, internal audit function, they are good. The reports are the output. So that's one of the ways you can tell if, you know, internal audit function. Um, and when I say the reports are good, I'm, I don't mean that the report says that everything is good in the company. The detailed, how detailed the report is, the content of the report, the presentation of the report, the structure of the report, you know, what goes into the report, the quality of the report produced. They have the qualifications of the and experience of the internal audit staff, whether they have exercised due care, um, the degree of independence of the internal audit function, the resources available, the scope of work performed, all of these things. Um, all of these things um, are factors that you use to evaluate the internal audit function. So what are the types of internal audits? Um, I call it FOC. Um, if you know this, you can actually know the functions of the internal audit department. Number one, it's financial audits. Number two, operational audit. Number three, compliance audits. So what are financial audits? You know, financial audit is what we all know. These are, this is the traditional role of the auditor, you know, it's where they are reviewing accounting records um, to substantiate the figures in the financial statement. So they look at the financial statement. You said you have provision for bad debt for of 18,000. Okay, so how did you come by this figure? Does it make sense? So they review accounting records and substantiate the figures in the financial statement. They have operational audits. When you hear operations, the word that should come into your mind is internal control procedures. So they examine internal control procedures and whether or not the control systems that have been established by management are operating effectively. So they look at, um, they look at um, the design of the control and whether it's operating effectively. And they make recommendations, right? They make recommendations. <sighs> okay. They have compliance audits. When you hear compliance, again, it relates to laws and regulations. So yeah, they are looking at you know, obeying laws and regulations to avoid regulatory impositions, right? Very, very important. So you are looking at complying with any law or regulation. So for example, if you are a telecommunication company, you'll be looking to, the internal audit should be helping with um, compliance audit to ensure that the rules that the National Communications Authority have put in place are duly followed, are duly followed. Very, very important. You do not want a situation whereby you are not following um, these duties. So you have financial, you have operational, you have compliance, FOC. Any questions? Okay. Um, you have factor, right? You have external audits, you have internal audits. Right? So here you are trying to find out the difference between external audits and internal audits. Now, if you look at duties and responsibilities, External audits expresses an opinion. Always remember that internal audits examines and assesses. Remember I said the way to replace opinion for internal audit is what assessment, assessment, assessment. 
So one is making an opinion, the other is making assessments. Quite similar in duty, but um, just the vocabulary that changes. Um, qualification to act, it is set out by statutes. You know, external audits are set out by statutes. Internal audits are not statutory requirements. Mode of appointment, external audits appointed by the shareholders, external audits appointed by management. Duties set by the statute, duties set by management. Reporting line, the shareholders for external audits. Reporting line, management for internal audits. So um, I, hope that, I hope that makes sense. That kind of like summarizes everything. If you want to know the differences between 